Number 1. Nothing could be more relaxing than a day of fishing. That is, if it doesn't end in murder. On July 18th, 2020, in Central Florida, three friends were found brutally murdered at the side of a local lake. The victims were identified as Damien Tillman, 23, Kevin Springfield, 30, and Brendan Rollins, 27. That night, at about 10, Brendan Rollins called his father and was able to say nothing but help. Mr. Rollins rushed to the location where the three friends were fishing. His son, who moments later died, was able to speak with his father for only a few seconds but police have not released any details of the conversation. Neighbors interviewed by the police indicated the area is known as a party spot where locals go on Friday nights and is often a place of trouble. Police had previously responded to many calls at the same location. Three people have been arrested and face charges for the murders. 26-year-old Tony Wiggins shot and killed the three friends after he ran into one of them. Damien Tillman in a general store. He heard Tillman plan to meet a friend, Kevin Springfield, to fish at Steely Lake. Wiggins later told his brother to drive him, along with his girlfriend, to the lake. Upon arrival, Wiggins accused Springfield of stealing his truck's engine, but Springfield said he had nothing to do with it. Wiggins punched Springfield in the face and shot the three men. In all, Nine bullets were fired. Wiggins has been charged with three counts of first degree murder, tampering with evidence, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Wiggins' girlfriend Mary Whitmore has been charged with accessory after the fact of a capital felony. She had bought the ammunition Wiggins fired that night, and then lied to investigators to protect her boyfriend. Wiggins' brother. William Wiggins has been charged with tampering with evidence and accessory after the fact. He was seen taking the truck that night to a car wash to scrub off red mud on the vehicle. Based solely on the theft of a truck engine, three people are now dead and another three may spend many years in prison. Number 2 On January 20th, 2020, it was quiet in a South Phoenix, Arizona neighborhood on Martin Luther King Day. 22-year-old Rachel Henry was enjoying time alone with her three children, but the day ended in evil. Rachel Henry has pleaded guilty to three counts of murder. She reportedly smothered her children while playing games in their living room. What makes these murders so horrific is not only that a young child was killed, but the way Henry killed them and then tried to disguise the truth. The young mother was playing a game with the kids, called Dogpile. When she saw her one-year-old was having trouble breathing, she put her hands over the child's mouth and nose. Realizing his mother was killing his sister, three-year-old Zane shouted at her to stop. Rachel continued to smother her daughter, and when she was dead, she tucked Myrie in with a blanket to make her look as if she had fallen asleep but the evil was not over. Next, the young mother began chasing her son around the room, but stopped when relatives returned home. They played with the boy for a while, and then Rachel took him into the bedroom to change his underpants. It was then she held down the boy and smothered him with her hands until he was dead. After she had killed her two children, she turned her attention to her seven-month-old baby. While giving her a bottle, Rachel covered her mouth and nose and smothered her until she was dead. Throughout the ordeal, she sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to the children. And once she had finished killing the children, Rachel placed all three on the couch wrapped in a blanket. After some time, an aunt discovered the children dead and called 911. On arrival, the police and paramedics saw cream-colored foam around the children's mouths. Court documents reveal that Rachel Henry was addicted to methamphetamine. Also, police in Oklahoma reported she had a history of domestic violence, resulting in her children being taken away from her for a short time. According to her aunt, she often gave unnecessary medicine to the children. 
When pleading guilty, Rachel Henry did not explain why she had killed her three young children. The state of Arizona is seeking the death penalty. The last woman sentenced to death for a child's murder in Arizona was Samantha Allen, who was sentenced in 2017 for the murder of her 10 year old cousin. If sentenced to death, Rachel Henry will join two other women on death row. In September of 2020, Rachel recorded a video message in which she said she felt trapped in the home and started to go crazy. She said she killed the children during a mental breakdown. Number 3. Babysitter 29 year old Kirsty Flood sits in a Georgia prison facing first degree murder charges in the December 9th 2020 killing of a two year old girl. In August 2020, Kirsten and Cameron Gant needed a babysitter for their two year old daughter after a daycare had been closed as a result of COVID-19. Kirsty Flood, a mother of a three year old herself, began babysitting little Fallon, Kirsten and Cameron's child. Everything seemed perfect. Kirsty Flood and Kristen Gant had been best friends for more than five years and their two girls often played together at the Flood house. There had been no previous indication that anything might have been wrong. Kristen Gant, Fallon's mother, said, It's like this evil was in front of my face for years and I never saw it. At noon that day, Kirsty Flood phoned to ask if Fallon could spend the night. Although there had never been a sleepover before, Fallon's parents agreed, thinking it would make their schedule a whole lot easier that day. Probably as any mother, Kirsten sent a text to Flood asking how her little girl was doing. 30 minutes later, Flood replied with, Everything is fine, we're at the park. After that, the babysitter's phone died. Mr. and Mrs. Gant were annoyed that Flood had taken their daughter to the park and let her phone die. Cameron Gant wondered if they shouldn't just go and pick Fallon up. They eventually decided everything was probably fine and that they would check with Kirsty later. An hour or so passed when Fallon's mother answered a video call from Kirsty so she could speak with the little girl. The call seemed odd according to Kristen Fallon. Normally a chatty girl was not responding to her mother. She was propped up on a pillow, but Flood was holding the phone about five feet away, and there was no sign of abuse. Thinking Fallon was just tired, Cameron Gant, Fallon's father, leaned over to join the call. When he did, the call was ended immediately. Another call was made to Kristen around 9.30 that night. The babysitter was crying uncontrollably and told Kristen to get to the hospital. She said that Fallon had fallen over from one of the slides earlier that day. Kristen and Cameron rushed to the hospital but were not able to see Fallon right away. When the doctor met with them, he said the two-year-old Fallon was stable but in critical condition. Just then, the doctor's radio crackled with the words, Code Blue. Around 20 nurses and doctors were in Fallon's room, each taking turns giving her CPR. The girl was not responding, and the ICU doctor said they were doing more harm than good. He told the parents if Fallon didn't respond in the next few minutes, he would have to call it. The little girl suffered a fractured skull, and her lung, spleen, and colon had ruptured. Kristen Gant held her little girl as she passed away in her arms. That same morning, it is alleged Kirsty Flood was searching the internet trying to find answers to some shocking questions. What kind of people enjoy abusing other people's children? What does it mean to have a certain urge to beat a child that is not yours? A few hours after Fallon had died, the babysitter sent a message to Kristen. I don't have a phone. They took it. But I love you and Fallon so very much, and I hope you know I would never hurt her. She has been with me forever, and we have always been so happy. And we both know that. She was the sweetest little angel and never even cried. I love you, and am praying for you to find it in your heart to forgive. I know I can't say as much as I need to or want to, but I would never hurt her. She was like a second daughter to me. When you're ready, please message me in the meantime. I'm deactivating my Facebook. I love you. Fallon's mother was shocked and confused by the message. 
Forgive her for what, she wondered. Could it all be true? Did she kill Fallon? It was horrible to believe. Flood has a lengthy criminal past and was arrested five different times before her 21st birthday for charges ranging from battery to alcohol and drug abuse. In November 2012, Kirsty was arrested after authorities found her in possession of the drug Alprazolam without a prescription during a traffic stop. She pleaded guilty to a drug charge and received three years of probation, but that probation was revoked in 2013 after she failed to comply with certain conditions. She was sent to jail for 15 days as a result. In January this year, Jeffrey Meyer, Kirsty's boyfriend, was also charged with murder. Police allege Meyer witnessed the murder and did nothing to stop it. Both Flood and Meyer are being held with no bond and are awaiting trial.